Welcome to episode 124, 124 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host today. And today, guess what? I'm actually not here. I'm on vacation. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So um, every year, my family and I take a trip to Ocean City, New Jersey, one of the most beautiful beaches in the country. Yes, I know you're saying it's in New Jersey. How could it be beautiful? Actually, North Jersey and South Jersey are very, very different places. Um, they should be different states. The same, I have the same belief about downstate New York and upstate New York, very different places. They should be different states, but I'm not trying to get political. Ocean City, New Jersey is a place that I grew up going. I've still made it a point to bring my family there every year for a week of rest. And this year, it wasn't looking good, actually. Uh, we just about did not make it because we scheduled, uh, we usually book the, book the place in January. And, this year, the pandemic hit and everything was closed and I had to cancel by April if I wanted to get my money back. So I canceled by April 15th, was incredibly devastated. And literally the day before we were going to leave, things started to look like they were gonna open up. And we said, you know what? Even if a lot of things are gonna be closed, it's still worth it to go. Ocean City, it's, a, it's just a place for me and for my family where you go and there's no pressure because you're very familiar with it. And we do the same thing every day. You wake up, you eat breakfast, you go to the beach, you lay around, get something to eat, you go back, walk on the boardwalk, repeat, 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 repeat. And to me, that is the great part of any good vacation is the fact that you can relax. I can't do the type, I don't know if you're like me, but you know, people who wanna go somewhere and do something new, um, I like that, but my mind goes into detail override and I spend most of my time, I guess if I was going on vacation by myself, that'd probably be what I would do is do something new and go to a big city and do lots of stuff. But when it comes to a family, when you want to concentrate on your family, I can't concentrate on my family because I'm so busy concentrating on details if we go somewhere new. So we go somewhere where I do the same thing every day and the family does the same thing and they get to experience uh, a side of dad that is a little less hyper and a little more relaxed. And you know, granted, we go for seven days and it usually takes me three to four of those days before I actually feel relaxed. I wear flip-flops every day. I don't wear as much black. I wear a lot of white t-shirts. It's just a funny thing about my mental state. I wear white t-shirts on vacation. I wear black t-shirts when I work. All that to say, point of today's podcast is the fact that I'm not here and I thought it would be great to talk about what it is to relax and refresh and give you a little piece of that in this little 10-minute chunk uh, that we have together today. So, we just had a live event, the Automotive State of the Union, but it was an event really about leadership, about leaning in during trials, about banding together during tough times. And there were a lot of people we had on the show that were, I found incredibly motivating and inspirational. Uh, one of those sessions was with Claude Silver, the Chief Heart Officer of VaynerMedia, and James Orsini, the CEO. EO of the Sasha Group. We also had uh, David Long and Jeff Danzler, JD, uh, both very, very inspirational leaders out of the San Francisco Bay Area. So I thought it'd be great to just uh, give you some snippets from that uh, of the points where I thought they made some really great points on how we should be thinking, how we should, we should be treating others, and how we could find mentally and emotionally. Just get a little bit of space. So here are some clips that I think you can... Uh, take in a snackable format, and hopefully leave this podcast better than it found you. One of the things that Gary says to us all the time, and it's it's a Garyism, is um, he is interested in wartime generals. And that's something that he has instilled with James and I um, since we both came on. Mm -hmm. It's peacetime is easy. Yeah, right. It's okay. Right. It's what goes on in the trenches and, and the blood, sweat and tears that both you and your teams are going through. And, and you know, what kind of general are you going to be is really the That's question. That's the truth. So you manage right now, Vayner, the Vayner organization is spread out uh, across the U.S. and other offices overseas. 
Um, what are the similar similar things that people are feeling regardless of where they are? Because I know states are all in different different stages of reopening. The city is obviously even different than it is where I am in Syracuse, right? A lot different state of reopening psychologically. But what are some of the similar things that you're seeing uh, people wrestling through, the feelings, the emotions? What are you seeing? Yeah, the first is anxiety. I mean, it's literally anxiety of of what's gonna happen to me, you know, obviously everyone is having to tighten their bootstraps. And so will I have a job? Will I have to be furloughed? These words that that um, are probably not in a youngster's repertoire. And now, you know, the idea of furlough and, and, um, and severance and these types of things. So will I have a job? Will I have enough Wi-Fi? to do my job from home yeah. when I'm required to go back into the office in a, in a city where we take public transportation, I don't feel safe taking public transportation. I lived with an, I live with an elderly. So it's really the health and welfare that people are dealing with. And what we know with anxiety is, is anxiety raises the cortisol levels in our, in our minds and, and creates underperformance. Mm-hmm. We, we yeah. can't no, function well when, when we're anxious. It doesn't, we don't compute. And so that is without a doubt a, a general uh, emotional experience that people are having. And I think the other experience now that we're 90 days in is an ability to relax. Mm. I know mm. I'm here for a while. You know, I can stay here. I can, you know, whatever. You're saying that people are starting to feel that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, th- I think that because we've been very transparent and, and pretty quick with our internal communications. Yep. Uh, certainly we're not taking anything off the shelf because there is nothing off the shelf or creating it, giving those people back to the peace of mind that I spoke about, even in advertising yep. of you're here for a while now. And so, you know, get settled, yep. get you to this screen, make sure you take breaks from this screen. Yep. You know, again, your health is more important to us than anything else. So I get the good fortune of being able to talk to a lot of my people. I've shifted all my offices out into the showroom so I can be front and center. And what I've noticed the most, Paul and JD, is that it is unreasonable, irrational fear that our pe- that my people seem to be falling into. Just a hundred forms of irrational fear of things that may never come to pass. But I think as a leader, really what my responsibility is, is to find a way to give people certainty, give people an environment where they feel safe, guide people in that, what I call manufactured misery, right? Where they can grab something and turn it into a bigger issue than it really is and put that to bed through communication immediately. Don't let it get bigger than it is. What are some of the things? So you said people uh, making things bigger than they are. There's these irrational fears that are taking over and taking control of people's minds and their logic. What are some of the, the irrational fears that you're seeing kind of bubble to the top? So what I've seen is there's a lot of anxiousness, a lot of anxiety, a lot of people that feel unsettled. So things that would normally be uh, water under the bridge or water off a duck's back have a tendency to be a little more relevant right now. In other words, we're making mountains out of molehills mm-hmm. because we're full of this cortisol. Mm-hmm. And I think when our when our brains are full of cortisol, we don't make rational decisions. And to your coach's point last night, I think people are in overtime finding reasons to feel work, um, anxiety. Mm-hmm. And it's not hard. You look anywhere, Paul, it's easy to find. So I think the more we can do what the chief heart officer talked about, give people um, a safe place and uh, give people a uh, the feeling of safety just through presence, mm-hmm. the better off we'll all be. Leaving people better than we found them, I think, is how she said it. It is. It is. My mom. So that's you. I think it's important. There's a lot of value in having friends and having people in your life that speak positivity. These friends that uh, we just showed you, these clips, they're some of the people that do it for me. And I hope that they were able to do that for you. I hope that together we're able to encourage one another, find a little bit of reason to to look a little more positively upon some of the situations that are incredibly challenging and incredibly difficult. And I, for one, want to be someone who sows positivity, encouragement, and hope into the world. I hope we did that today. I hope you have an amazing week. I hope you find somewhere to refresh and restore and renew yourself. And I hope to see you very, very soon. 
until then, pursue clarity. Yeah.